Greetings everyone, welcome back to the studio. Today I want to give you some uh, guidance on what I'm calling Clovid 1, uh, a narrative still life. That's our uh, first real project for our absentee semester. Um, what the project uh, is about is creating a still life in your own home studio that uh, has a narrative quality and um, the, uh, uh, st uh, the drawing will be uh, finished out in ink and wash uh, just like we had started practicing before a spring break happened and um, so let me give you some particulars uh, about what I've got set up here um, so uh, let's see this is a still life that came together for me just kind of serendipitously as I was uh, grabbing stuff from my office and, and coming home, uh, you probably recognize the uh, the cast of uh, of the skull and and maybe I don't know if I brought this out. Maybe my little uh, toy knight right here. Um, so uh, what this uh, reminded me of when I when these things fell together in the box was uh, a scene from the movie The uh, Seventh Seal in 1958, I think, filmed by the Swedish filmmaker Ingmar Bergman. It's a um, black and white masterpiece. For those of you who are in the film and animation class, it's something that you should watch. It is a gorgeous film. The, the movie is about a knight returning home from the uh, Crusades, returning home, home from, returning home from Sweden, and uh, finding that his country and his home town is being ravaged by the Black Plague. Um, the film is really about um, his struggling to believe in God and um, his desire to do one last uh, good moral act before, before he dies. And there's a really fantastic scene in the movie where he plays chess with death on, on this uh, beach. It is just an amazing scene, and so that's what this reminded me of. I, I grabbed my, <coughs> my uh, daughter's uh, chess set and, and set this little still life up. So, um, and here I'm gonna, I, I made this so you could see uh, the seventh seal. Um, you could probably watch it for free on YouTube. I definitely recommend it. Um, so what I would like you to do for your drawing is to uh, take some stuff that you have in your uh, living situation and create a, a little st still life that has a narrative to it. Um, this is something that I learned to do uh, from my uh, drawing teacher um, who is a professional still life painter now and his still lives were all um, collections of stuff that he had uh, gathered throughout his life and each one of those items had a memory associated with it and and he would take these items and arrange them with each other in a way that he he said um, was like a stage setting so he was letting these memories interact with one another um, on these little lit stages so um, as usual um, be aware of the lighting you're using so in my studio I have uh, I have this funky light um, <clears throat> that I'm using to light this and I've got this oblique light where the light is casting across the side of the still life and um, what I set that up for was because I wanted the knight to be walking into his shadow as this uh, sort of symbol of of death was was looking on after him and and there's some other chess pieces here who are uh, sort of knocked down <clears throat> and the uh, I replaced he the and for the night he was the toy itself had a, a shield and I replaced that with a paintbrush um, because I I believe that uh, creativity is the remedy for all of this anxiety anyway um, I want to talk a quick second about how to arrange a good still life. Um, it's something that I really enjoy doing. Um, as you probably noticed uh, over this semester, I, I like to spend time with arranging things. And so 
I've set up a little thing here to talk about what a couple of things to do and a couple of things maybe to avoid, although there are no strict rules. Um, so uh, here are, are some things I just set up. What you want to look for are items that have a variety of sizes and shapes. Um, and <clears throat> um, you want to put those together in such a way where um, they, let me get in here a little bit, where they have a sort of uh, attraction or, or maybe repulsion with each other according to the proximity that they are setting to each other. So I can, um, I set this little thing up um, uh, because I liked, I wanted to show you the way that these shadows work in here, I found really fascinating. Um, if I change this so that the shadows are, are casting this way, it sort of falls apart and doesn't have the same cohesion to it. Um, and even like that, if I come and make this sort of a backlit situation, it sort of falls apart there. Sorry about that slip. Um, so um, I want to move things around, um, put this back like this, so that they hold together and, and move throughout what is going to be my picture frame. So let's move these here. I've got this taller object, this uh, uh, black ink bottle here that sort of can act as a, a tower or the, the big object that, that these other things sort of tumble down across. Um, and I like to use the, the shadows cast by things like that for um, compositional purposes. And um, so maybe... Maybe something like this, if it were cropped down into, uh, let me crop this side off, for example, get that situation set up, or have that long shadow like that. What I'm looking at right now are the repetition of directions of visual forces. So the shadow being cast here, um, contradicted by the the X created right here, leading the eye down and around. Let me lift it back up a little bit. Scissors pointing back up to this circle, and that just sort of winds its way back in. So that's kind of a nice little composition there. Um, here are a couple of people to look at who uh, are still life artists that uh, make amazing compositions. Uh, Stephen Simons, uh, who I mentioned earlier, is my teacher, and uh, his website is stephensimonsart.com. And another artist named Giorgio Morandi, who is a still life painter, an Italian uh, post World War II, uh, very, very beautiful, very quiet, simple still lives, uh, stunningly beautiful. Um, anyway, um, I'm not going to go back over the techniques of the uh, uh, painting with the ink and wash since. You've already done that. Let me know if you have any questions. As far as this goes, I think my favorite spots are right in here, like right there. I like the way that the, the paintbrush cuts down in between the, uh, the queen um, and uh, pawn there. I like the way that this little king or, or not, that's the queen, anyway. She's about to fall off the edge of that very dangerous. And maybe, though, maybe I would come over here and look at this and adjust the light. Because I like that sort of leering quality. Um, in any case, the parameters for the still life are um, on the assignment sheet. But I'll go over them again here. Uh, 18 by 24 ish size ink and wash on paper set up your still life do five or more thumbnails remember practice is really what's going to make you better repetition iteration when you find the setup that you like then um, move to bigger paper and uh, finish your drawing upload those uh, to the appropriate 
file in D2L, the assignments file. Um, that would be uh, the still life drawing, of course, uh, your five thumbnails, and a picture of the still life you're working from. I'm just curious what you guys all come up with. In any case, have a fun time, and this has gotten long enough. So let me know if you need any help. Uh, we can communicate via email or even uh, Zoom. And I hope this finds you well. Good luck. Stay safe. Have fun. Bye-bye.